Okay. We're live. Yo. Yeah, so now, yeah, now I posted it. Now it's shared and it's all good. Okay. Do I need to put in my profile also? No? If you want, yeah. Uh, no, like a public public one? No. If you have a personal one you want to put on it, <clears throat> then you can post and tell everybody to come to Twitch with their music. So then they won't need to annoy you on the email, sending you a lot of uh, demos and whatever. How have you been? How are you? Okay, good to man. see you. Good to see you too. Welcome to the Disco Halal ANR sessions. Guests, you're the episode number 31. That's 31. not bad. Awesome. Yeah, that's not bad. I've been work grinding, working hard. It's been, uh, I don't know how long. Uh, uh, to reminder of most of the people already know, hello, everybody in the chat. Everybody uh, that's joining us. Right. Yeah, people are joining. Mm -hmm. I'm checking that everything is okay. Yeah, slowly, slowly. It's like a club, you know. You open the door, that not everybody's running through it. <laughs> it so, takes a while. Sounds good, man. Yeah, it takes a while for them to come. The track but was yeah. pretty good. What did you play in the beginning? That's uh, my release. Oh. Uh, it came out on... Uh, at the beginning, it came out on uh, Renato's label. I forgot the name. Your, your track it was. Yeah. Really? I was like, what would I put with this? I'm like, my track. It's the only thing that stands. I can get the, this and this Kohala stuff. I can clear the rights on YouTube. <laughs> so it's all good. I don't yeah, need to right. worry. But yeah, uh, it's called Devo. Devo. Send it. Uh, I will. I it's old. I think you have it, no? I don't think old. so, no. No? No, no. Very old. I'll anyway, check. Sounds I'll good check. like the bass in it. Yeah. Probably my biggest, uh, my biggest track today till day till today to date as to we say date. so uh, the concept is uh, as usual we speak people send music slowly they're coming and the same music and uh, you know we can be wherever we want to be so if you want to complain about stuff this is the place if you want to talk about interesting stuff how's life been uh, in zurich all right lockdown is everywhere yeah not much to do pretty focused on my stuff you know, it's bad and not bad, you know, somehow you don't get distracted, but it's, of course, tough times, but, um, you know, it is what it is. What can you do? Yeah. It's it's the, I, would, I don't want to be home crying the whole day just to, to do my shit and be focused, you know, stay on my... I mean, I'm busy enough with industry and relish and all of that stuff. Yeah. So I just put the compilation out. I don't know if you saw. Mm -hmm. I've seen and the all the all the merchandise and everything is really 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 cool. Yeah, that's the industry. But industry is more of a concept. It's not really just a music label. So it's more like an art yeah. project with exhibitions it's and artworks and all. And and relish is more classical music label. Yeah, and mostly you do edits on industry, no, right? Your edits. No, no, it's all. It's just basically my own music. But I did uh, have a new project with uh, Douglas McCarthy from Nights Red. Mm -hmm. It's a new band we did. It's called Sazam. Mm -hmm. And um, mainly it's just my own output. Maybe a few collaborations with people, but it's not a label. I'm not going to sign people or have other people's music. I mean, I, I put out The Flowers of Romance, which I kind of reworked because I really, really like the original Yeah. on Industria. And then it's also always the releases are very, um, they have to come out on vinyl and all. And... Now I'm doing the third vinyl. Um, it's like an EP, and it's just a part of the whole music thing, you know, of the and whole the, concept of the whole label. I mean, yeah, it's not just music, but music is part of it as one. Yeah, and it's uh, and you're doing all the artworks and everything. Who's doing all the? Yeah, no, it's all my. Yeah, as I said, it's like a, an art project for me. It's. Uh, it starts from paintings, prints, T-shirts, products, even goes into clothing a little bit. And it's just yeah. trying to do a 360 thing with Industria. And, and uh, uh, what do you, where, where do you sell most of the stuff? It's on Bandcamp or is it... Uh... No, the Industria stuff I don't sell on Bandcamp. I mean, the vinyls, yes, and the, yeah. the digital music, but the rest is all on the website. And as I said, I always did a show, an exhibition kind of a thing around... Mm -hmm. Actually, I always use the release on vinyl to do an exhibition with it. So I did yeah. the first one in 2018 in Berlin, 2019 in Zurich, and there was to be another one in 2020, but didn't happen. So hopefully 
next year the next one and then I, sh I, I sell on the show I sell products to small things till bigger like you know I did bags I did a lot of like recycling reworking materials and stuff it's all as I said it's more a concept label than yeah that. What do you enjoy more to do? You do this stuff or the A and Ring of the? I mean, what that, do you still find? I mean, Relish is is here for a while already. Still find it interesting to work with other artists, or you prefer to spend more time on on your own stuff at this? Well, I obviously, on this year. Obviously, for me, it's clear. I need to focus on me as an artist, and and just the way things work these days, it's really hard to just put music out. Yeah. Of other people's as you know how difficult it is to run a record label as long as things don't change but i still have the passion for it and i still you know i'm not really actively looking for a uh, artist or stuff but usually i keep saying okay i want to want to stop for a while and focus on industrial which i'm doing at the moment anyway but still you yeah. know people send you tracks you hear something i like to do at the moment i do these compilations which i quite like it's like an easy way of gathering a few tracks without uh, any pressure and I can't really, you know, give anyone a platform that I could do an album. I don't have the manpower. I do pretty much everything by myself. But, uh, you know, yeah. I think as, I always said, like, as long as there's a necessity or a need or an understanding for the music, I'll do it. And I think it's still okay, you know. I still, people, it uh, sounds like they still want to be on Relish. And, and, and as long as I have a relevance musically, what's going on out there. Yeah. Then I think it's cool. If one, one day maybe I will be like, I'm bored or I don't understand anymore what's going on. Then maybe I'll. I'm going to stop but for now it's still and anyway I do I mean I don't really look what what other people do I just you know if I take something I think it's interesting and has a sense or is is also not just dance music for the sake of it especially now you know the net the last compilation I want it to be also quite listenable so people can listen and enjoy it at home yeah of course it's always kind of dancey but it's not like it doesn't need to be club records that have to be played and in the clubs that don't exist right now anyway so who knows we are always we are i think we always uh, talk about this because it's it's like a you know it's like a common a very common topic is about the clubbing and whatever but yeah you know but it is what it is you know still you know it's good that people keep you know you keep releasing music and stuff so you know there's a, another motivation and just be like trying to keep myself sane also you know keep myself working keep myself busy yeah but that's good you know i mean maybe sometimes you know you you even put out stuff now that you wouldn't put out normally i don't know I mean, things maybe yeah. you know like oh i could take a risk or i take something that maybe it's not really for the dance floors i would like yeah. to, the djs that that you, you you like to support it or whatever you know i feel like for some reason if you then the dance stuff are still I mean, it's still selling, you know, from the numbers I see. It's not like it's stopped. No, of course not. I'm not right? Like uh, there's no more sales or whatever. People still buy. People still play a lot, you know, streams and this kind of stuff. So there is music. It's not successful. It's not, there's no way to create like a huge wave of tracks. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. The question is about taking a risk yeah and you know i'm i'm always like to take risks and to do stuff like that were you know weren't weren't been focused before you know and do this kind of stuff but uh you know i'm still i'm still trying to to crack you know the code of the future in in general in the music and uh you're trying to, to crack the code of the future yeah what does no, that mean? what's gonna happen what's What's, what am I, what's future what I, music? Fu the future music and the future of music, you know, at the same time. Yeah, well, like our cool. music at least. No, to see where it's going in in this kind of. Okay, come May, come June, is it going to be in a semi-normal May or semi-normal June to release kind of music that you would normally release in May and June? Is there is no more? Is there no more a need for a calendar? You know, when you release music, can you release daily and see whatever is going to happen? You know, good. yeah. Well, and then we will see. You know, you don't know, but no one knows. So it's the good. No. It's also an interesting period. You know. No, yeah, and that's that. I think my mind is most of the day. I mean, most of the day, a lot of the time is occupied, but by. Uh, 
you know, cracking this kind of code, which is, it's like asking what's life, you know, at the same time, it's not, it's not something that I'm going to get an answer for. It's just, it's just a way to pass the time till we, till it's over, I think. Yeah, of know? course, keeps you busy. No, I mean, yeah. I guess it's good, you know, if you have a, see I what the future brings and where the sound goes. I mean, obviously the last few years we were all in this retro world and, um, yeah. Everything is where we read through the scenes, the sounds that all, let's see if that's going to change. Or, I mean, also there's different scenes and so many different kinds of, of little niche. Um, yeah, I mark. feel like uh, we were very close to breaking through again, you know, to kind of a more mainstreamy, more sustainable kind of career. Uh, not career from the DJ point of view, but like musically to have a little more... Uh, more attention but it you know it took it they it took us away it took us away from it you know and it's going to be like a setback of a few years yeah I'm, I'm thinking a lot of a lot of the underground i don't think i mean our generation of music as opposed to the previous generation i think uh, from our world especially i think they had the chance to go above like to go over the the border and do and um you know produce music for pop you know and we didn't have that chance yet you know what i mean we were like close to become okay let's get red access to produce the next x or whatever or to be this but we were like we were shy of a couple we were shy like a couple of years before it's before we could have done it you know what i mean Yes, I kind of know. I can imagine what you mean. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. It all depends if the big shots, you know, get to listen to the music. I think the problem these days is more that people get even to listen to stuff. Is they, if, if there would be an easier way of, like, let's say, disco halal, you know, could enter some other markets, like people yeah. who maybe are more traditional techno listeners or house listeners. It's just also about getting you heard out there. The more the people hear it, the more the chances are that something happens. But I, I don't have so much this, this you know, the pop and all. I mean, anyway, pop, the way I see it, the way I, I read a lot of books about the late 70s, early 80s, it was just a different planet now. And it's just, yeah. I think I just try to do interesting things and music that I think personally is interesting. And then if people judge it, if it goes crossover nice, thank you. If not, then well, it doesn't, you know? Yeah, because I feel like in my mind, I always think about, let's say, Daniel Miller and Mute and all back in the days that really broke, you know, this barrier of becoming super popular music. Forget about if it's pop music or not. It, it did became pop music. Yes. Yes, you but it, I mean, you can compare it. To, you can't compare the late seventies with now, obviously, because it was yeah. different. I mean, especially Daniel Miller with Mute when he signed. Like you know, he did the normal, and it was just people were like, "What the fuck?" You know, it was at first. First of all, it was a very ahead, very unique, and then yeah. and they also had to take chances and risk. And for example, Depeche Mode in the beginning, everyone was laughing at Depeche Mode. You know, it took yeah. them like a long time till they became what they became after a Stadium rock band in the beginning people were like yeah, it's a funny synth pop band yeah from, Cheesy, from like outside German of Dragons. london <laughs> well yeah i mean some people liked them but some people definitely especially the english music press was really hardcore back then you know they were fucking yeah. destroying everyone who wasn't <laughs> who wasn't ever with a big guitar and yeah, you know, was really and fighting against rock bands and what yeah, is yeah, and the last paul and the, and the other hand seven yeah, solos. on the other hand we have it easy you know we have a computer we have synthesizers we can do it without any rules no one is saying oh what you're using like ableton yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. You, you use what i can and what what is available so that's also a positive aspect of of now i don't know it depends you know but we'll yeah. see we shall see hmm? yeah i mean so, it creates uh there is like a it's hard to be we are all living in a saturated world you know so it's hard it's hard to be someone but i think at the same time you can have the small I wouldn't call it small, but you can be satisfied, you know, as opposed to if you were a band back in the days and you wouldn't break through, you know, it was either you're breaking through or not. There is no middle. And now you can be in the middle. Yeah. Well, not... I mean, it's getting harder. Let's say when, yeah. I, when I started early 2000, late 90s, it was still easier because the markets were still more yeah. 
healthy and you could put out a crazy record and jockey slot would pick it up in England and then someone would be like, oh yeah, and someone would be like, who's this guy? And then you sell records. Of course, it's a little yeah. harder to be in the middle. It's like, or you cross kind of over and become commercial or you yeah. you dumple around with the lower, but I, I think my saddest, my saddest thought is that there is no more, uh, somebody said the music press, but there's no more press, you know? Well, That's my saddest thought about w the the opposite of what happened when I grew up, you know, and how I looked at things and, and how I'm looking at things now, especially when I run a label and have a big distribution and PR and everything. <laughs> you know, it feels so meaningless as opposed to, I wish that somebody would grab my record you know, that's why I like reviews, like real reviews that are not paid for or whatever. You know, it's like somebody listened, you know, somebody didn't just forward an email or whatever, did something like that. Yeah, well, that's changed. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It would be nice to have a nice music paper. You pick it up and you go like, oh, did they write about it? And then you get excited when you get yeah. rating and all. But um, who knows? Maybe it's going to go back. Who knows? Maybe people are going to leave social media. <laughs> <laughs> Not not sure about that, uh, but uh, we can make it ourselves. That's what I think. Well, industry has. A, I started, for example, industry has a little fans in magazine thing. So yeah. who knows? One day I'm gonna ask artist people. You never know. Yeah. Just, I think it's important to create alternatives and not do the same as everyone else does. And and we'll see what's gonna happen, right? Yeah. You wanna listen to some music? 